everyone. It's so good to have all of you here. My, oh my, it's so nice to see such a wonderful crowd of people come out to hear the Bible school, um, sing tonight, and to worship together with them and with us, worship our God. Um, we're going to just start with a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll proceed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that we uh, can have this, the choir here and ask that you bless them in a special way as they share with us tonight. And we pray that you draw each of us, uh, draw our hearts to you as we think more upon your great love and mercy toward us. So we ask that you would bless this time of worship tonight. Be with the choir and the director and Pastor Rolf as he shares too and those who are uh, sharing testimonies. We pray that you'd speak through each one of them. We ask your blessing on this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand for the first hymn and uh, we're in the last part of the choir will process in. Thank you. 
Good evening. I'm Andrew Eagle, an MK from Brazil. I was greatly blessed to have been born to Christian parents and to grow up on the mission field of Brazil. Um, I do not ex remember the exact day when I came to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, but um, I do remember various camps and church services in which God made himself real to me. And I remember various moments of recommitment to Christ. Um, those times have been greatly, have been very important to me, and they have helped me refocus my attention on God, and um, re reminded me of the amazing grace of God that brings salvation to all who call on His name. One thing that God has really been showing me is the need to daily surrender to Him. And we see this in James 4, 7, and 8. It says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. God has taught me that walking with Christ means to daily get into the Word, and have fellowship with God. God calls us to daily surrender. He wants us to commit our lives to Him each day. Our sinful nature works against us, and if we do not turn to God each day, our old nature, those things that we that come naturally for us to do, um, that do not please God, take control of our lives. Here are a few verses that I like about um, seeking the Lord and surrendering Him. Um, 1 Chronicles 16.11 Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Psalm 14, 16. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, The Lord is exalted. Deuteronomy 4, 29. But if, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you look for Him with all your heart and with all your soul. And also Proverbs 8, 34. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. God promises in His Word that He will answer us if we seek for Him, and um, He will give us strength and guidance each day. I found this to be very true in my life, and when I seek God and look for ways to grow closer to Him, He guides my steps and helps me through the day. I would encourage each one of you to seek the Lord each day. Don't get caught up in thinking that going to church once a week is enough. God wants us to be every day um, seeking Him and in relationship with Him. God has greatly blessed my life by His Word, and He will definitely bless your life as well as you seek Him and seek to serve Him.
Um, I asked Christ into my heart as a little girl, but towards the end of last year and really beginning um, was Summer Teens this summer, which is a VBS team based through Applebus. Um, my relationship with the Lord started becoming so much deeper and more personal. During our first week out, when one of my little five-year-old girls told me that sin is what makes her heart dirty, I realized more how I am nothing without Christ and really need to be dependent on Him for everything. After summer teens, the Lord blessed me with the opportunity to go to Israel with my dad and meet some amazing young people from all over the world whose fire for the Lord was unbelievable. Um, through the many opportunities in these few days, and the Lord really revealed himself to me in a new way and gave me a passion for him unlike anything I've ever experienced before. When I was back in America, all I could think about was returning to Israel because I was afraid of losing that passion for him. But I knew in my heart that God had called me to be in America for now. The Spirit of the Lord is with me no matter where I am, says Psalm 139. So I know that I don't have to be in Jerusalem to be on fire for the Lord, but it still took me a while to accept this. Now I am so thankful that the Lord brought me back to Apple this, this year. I have been blessed and challenged by the classes, but the time I spend alone with the Lord and in His Word have especially become so rich and something I really hunger after. It seems like I have attended so many, quote, Christian services and conferences this year that have led me to search for why I really want to be a Christian. Through all this and my experience in Israel, I began to question, why do I really believe this and how far am I really willing to go for Christ? I began to see the difference between just being a Christian and having a hunger and a longing to spend time with the Savior of the world. I really do need the Lord because without Him, I'm a sinful person just like everyone else. Throughout this year at Bible school, I feel like the main thing that the Lord has been teaching me is to continually remind me of how powerful and mighty He is, and how dirty and sinful I am, and just how amazing His work on the cross really is. The Almighty God of the universe is the same one who dwells in my heart, and is working and alive. When I think about how amazing this is, I can't help but want to share it with as many as possible, because it's true for everyone. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed as I think about all the uncertainties of next year, and even this summer as I plan to go out on a PBS team again. Then I have to stop and remember that my life is not about me. My purpose is not even to please others. My life is all about the Lord, because He's the author of it, and the one who dwells inside of me. Empowering me to do all that He calls me to do, and drawing my heart closer to his, so that his name might be lifted high. Second Peter 5, 10 through 11 says this. He must also be my first, always be my first love, according to Revelation 2, 4, because everything I do is worthless without him. In the end, when it's all said and done, Christ Jesus is the only one that matters. So praise the Lord, and may all glory be to God.
from the area around here too, uh, studying at Bible school. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the Association of Free Lutheran Bible School is a college level school of the Bible. We study Genesis to Revelation, uh, most of those books in uh, some greater and some lesser detail, but uh, a great study of the Word and evangelism, discipleship, missions, Christian education, uh, some of the other classes and music certainly is a, a major part of the education there too. And we really believe it's a great training for life. Whatever vocation the Lord may lead us in, as husbands and wives in the workplace, wherever God would call us, that we can be more effective uh, servants and laborers in this harvest. I, we're all called to be that uh, salt and light. As we think of the Great Commission, it really applies to every believer in some way, shape, or form that he wants us to be involved in. It's a great training ground, and uh, one of the pieces we have on our display is just a picture that gives a, a quick snapshot glance of uh, what Bible school is about in the back size of curriculum for the year. It's on the bottom, and some of the other universities that accept credits too from our Bible school. Um, many can, going to a Christian college, and some state schools will accept credits to varying degrees that also help in, uh, in that. Uh, we appreciate, too, the great support. I know this congregation supports, and, and many of the congregations in the region here support in a great way with scholarships, too, the students that attend. And I can't tell you what a blessing that is to these students. I know they can tell you personally, too, and many of them do, but it's, it is a tremendous support and encouragement uh, to them. Um, one of the ways that we are hoping to build that, too, for, for many students that don't have that support, too, uh, we're able to give about $5,000 each semester. So as you think about, that's probably even about what this congregation gives to its students. And, and so you think about spreading $5,000 across our student body, and it doesn't go very far. And uh, if the Lord would lay on your heart to, 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 to give a special gift for the scholarship fund, uh, or maybe there's some years when you're not having a, a person from your congregation attending, can be a great thing to encourage uh, other students too in, in being able to come to Bible school. Uh, encourage the young people from, from your congregations. Those of you who are here tonight in, in high school, I really encourage you to prayerfully consider a Bible school after high school. We have out there too a prayer guide. Uh, uh, the faculty, staff, the seniors, or the missionaries, uh, also the seminary, faculty, and staff, the students there, and if you want, would be so kind as to pray for us too. We have this prayer guide for you. Also, uh, we have a brand new CD just hot off the uh, production to this week. It has a picture of Mount Rainier. This has all the songs that the choir is singing tonight. This will be a gift for you, Pastor Huber, and, and you would enjoy that too. So we, we are truly overjoyed to be able to come tonight. For our meditation, I'd like for you, if you'd turn with me to Luke chapter 5. It's a great chapter of encouragement when we think of the privilege it is to share the gospel of Christ wherever we go. And here on this Friday night, many of you, after a busy week, as many of us have had this week, uh, it's, it's good to stop and think about the opportunities. And uh, think about this question. How many of you who know Jesus as your Savior uh, shared Jesus with someone this week? your workplace, or in school, uh, your family, hopefully. But in those outside, thinking of that question tonight, and thinking of Jesus here, Luke 5, 27, it says, After that, Jesus went out and noticed a tax gatherer named Levi sitting in the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he left everything behind and rose and began to follow Jesus. And Levi gave a big reception for Jesus in his house. And there was a great crowd of tax gatherers and other people who were reclining at the table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax gatherers and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It's not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for this, your word, and that your word is true. 
And we pray now that by your Holy Spirit, you would open this word to our heart and apply it to our life. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you who know Jesus Christ as your Savior shared him with someone this week? Or have shared him with someone this year? Uh, I know a good number of you have, and, and that's good. And that's good. It's important. It's something that God would have us to pray about each day. To pray for opportunities. To look for opportunities. And to, to use them as God would give them. And Jesus certainly gives us a great encouragement, not only in these verses, but in this whole chapter. In verse 12 and following, we see that a, a man full of leprosy came to Jesus. And he fell on his face and, and begged Jesus, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now, leprosy is a dreaded disease. And, and to touch someone with leprosy certainly would make a person very at risk to get that. If someone touched a leper, they were considered ceremonially unclean. And Jesus, out of love and grace for that poor leper, stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I'm willing to cleanse you. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy let, left him. Jesus was willing to help people, to stop and help those who cried out to him along the way of life. He wasn't too busy. To spend time with the little children. Whom the disciples. Were ready to cast aside. Jesus said permit the children to come to me. Don't hinder them. The kingdom of God. Belongs to such as these. In verse 16. We see a secret here of. Perhaps why Jesus responded. Certainly he is this way. He is God himself. But we might ask the question. How could he respond this way. To people day in and day out. But verse 16 tells us. He himself would often slip away. To the wilderness and pray. <coughs> That's a great secret for us. How can we be ready. To give an answer to the hope that's within us each and every day. As in our workplace or school or the office or wherever we are. In our neighborhoods. To pray. Friends, it's so significant. If we are to have the love of God in the heart of Jesus Christ for people. Uh, we too need to pray often. To commit our ways to the Lord. To Pray for his heart to see people as Jesus does and to be willing to stop and touch those ones along the way in our life. To take time, to make time, to care as Jesus does. Without specific prayer about this and for those people in our life, often our eyes are, are blurred to see the opportunities. And we, we pass them by all too often. So often it can become business as usual. Just focusing on our work. Or on our schoolwork. Or the things we have to get done. And we lose sight of the opportunities that, that come our way in our daily life. To share the love of Jesus. Right before these verses about Levi. You notice... That Jesus was teaching in a certain place. And, and there is that great story of the paralytic. Who was lowered by four men. Down right where Jesus was. Teaching in that, that house. Uh, helping people. And that paralytic. That night. That day. Had his sins forgiven. And was, was healed. And here with with. With Levi. What a great story. Notice in verse 27 here it says, Jesus after that went out and he noticed, he saw a tax gatherer named Levi sitting in the tax office and he said to him, Follow me. What a gracious invitation. Follow me. Come. Follow me. 
Jesus saw Levi. Do we see the opportunities that God gives us each day to encourage and help others in our workplace and school and community? God so often gives us many more than what we see. Many more opportunities than what we see. When Jesus here called Levi, this, that, that in itself is a, a phenomenal thing. When you think of Levi, a tax collector who was scorned and ostracized by everybody in the community, uh, the people in the synagogue wouldn't have him. He was considered like a murderer. Murderers and, and tax collectors were in the same book to the Jewish leaders. They were, they were excommunicated from the synagogue. And so they, these guys couldn't even come to hear Jesus speak in the synagogue. And so, but Jesus went to where this man was and said, come, follow me. Levi, I want you to follow me. I want you to know forgiveness of sins. I want you to know the assurance of eternal life. And Jesus not only has stopped, he invited him. And notice verse 28 says that he left everything behind and rose up and began to follow Jesus. This was too great of an invitation to pass out. He came, he left everything to follow Jesus. It's significant. And there Levi experienced the forgiveness of his sins. He probably was very wealthy and tax collecting was a lucrative business. But he still left everything to follow Jesus. Jesus broke Levi's bondage to money as he was brought to repentance of sin and faith in Christ. Here was a man looking for purpose and meaning in life. You know, there's no satisfaction eternally in gaining mere wealth by defrauding others through dishonest gain. The guilt and burden of one's actions becomes unbearable. And there's only one remedy, and that is repentance of sin. And maybe it's, there's whatever the sin is that is holding you back tonight, there's only one remedy. And that is Jesus Christ and His blood that He shed on the cross to atone for our sin. As the choir is saying, He willingly took that on the cross. He never said a mumble in word. He willingly gave His life and shed His blood to atone for our sin. And Levi here in faith trusted Jesus and experienced that forgiveness and as an evidence of his conversion, he went and invited all his other tax collectors, friends, to come to his house for a special evening meal. And the honored guest was Jesus. They came to his house. Verse 29 says, Levi gave a big reception for Jesus in his house. And there was a great crowd of tax gatherers and other people who were reclining at the table with them. What an opportunity. Here was uh, Evangelist Levi inviting his friends to meet Jesus, the one who could forgive their sins too, who could give them eternal life, who could give them hope. He wasted no time and Jesus loved all these people. He had a message for them. He had time to spend with these people in, in Levi's house. And the people listened to the message of Jesus. Friends, do you want your friends and co-workers, classmates in school to meet Jesus? One of the things we can learn from this short passage is that Levi did. It's an evidence of a truly repentant heart and life when we love Jesus and we want to make Him known to others. Now, 1 John 3, 14 says, We know we've passed from death to life because we love the brethren. We want others. We love others and we want them to know Jesus too. The question comes that we need to ask ourselves. The first question is this. Do you really love them and care about their soul and their relationship to Jesus? 
If, if they don't know Jesus, do you care enough to pray for them? How long is your daily prayer list? Is it merely mom and dad, my sister and me, us four, no more? Or is it the other people in your life? That you go to school with, that you work with, your neighbors? It begins, friends, like, it, like Jesus' example here of prayer. To pray for people. To pray for people and their needs. Do we care enough to pray? Do we care enough to spend time with other people? Would you invite them to a place to hear about Jesus like Levi here? Think about the people you work with each week that you could invite to meet Jesus, who need to meet Jesus, who've never met Him yet, and experience the saving grace. The first question here deals with our heart. If our heart has grown lukewarm or cold toward Jesus, we need to seek forgiveness and to pray that God would so revive us and lead us to repentance and, and, and renew in us a right spirit of how much we need Jesus and how much others do need Him. And the second part of this deals with the method. Once God has our heart, He will show us the method that He would have us to use. Some of you, like Levi, have a great gift of hospitality. And you love to invite people over to your house. It's a great opportunity to share Jesus. And uh, through loving hospitality. Others maybe find it easier to, to go to a restaurant. Or maybe go to West Acres and sit by one of the tables by the big fireplace. Or wherever it is. To meet someone. And listen. And to be willing to hear what's on their heart. To pray. And to share the gospel of Christ. In whatever ways it would be. Others of you have a hobby or sport that you love to do and others of your friends love to do it. Sometimes it's a great thing like hunting or fishing or golfing or basketball or uh, bowling or quilting or baking or, or just going for a walk together with somebody else. It can be a great opportunity to talk, to love them, to encourage them, and to share, be ready to share the gospel of Christ. These become wonderful opportunities of spending time and, and sharing Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus can change your life and your friend's life? You know, Levi did, didn't he? He invited all of them and he invited Jesus that they could be introduced to Jesus too and to experience his saving grace. So I encourage you tonight, as, as I wrap this up here, to, to think about how is it in your life. Maybe there's someone here tonight who's not yet experienced God's saving grace. And Jesus invites you tonight to repent of your sin. Jesus died for all your sin. As, as Romans 6.23 says, what we deserve for our sin is death. And Jesus took that for us at the cross. And he rose again from the grave. He lives today and He calls us to repent of sin, and to receive, to trust in Him as our Savior and Lord. And for you, and those of us who know Him, maybe things have gone lukewarm or cold even spiritually, that we don't have this passion to share Jesus with others in our school or workplace or neighborhoods. Pray that God will revive your heart tonight. Renew your heart with His passion, with His love. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank You for Your heart, Jesus, for all people everywhere, even those whom the world so often looks down on or scorns, like Levi was, by the people of his day. Lord, You died for all people. And You died for every person in, in this place tonight. And, 
and throughout all our communities throughout the world. And you want all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would continue to revive our hearts, impress on our hearts what you want to do in and through the life you've given us. Forgive me and forgive us, Lord, when we have not seen the opportunities where our heart has not been ready and responsive to respond in the way that you would have us to, Lord. Lord, help us to be ready always to give an answer to the hope within us. Continue to bless this congregation and the many congregations represented here tonight. May you continue to do a great work by your grace in each place. Lord, and as your word continues to go forth, may it be lived out in each of our lives in the way that you would have it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. so thankful for the day that I understood that Jesus had died for me and that uh, my sins were all taken care of in him and that I could have a new life. He gave me his righteousness in place of my sinful record and uh, so glad to know that I could stand justified <clears throat> in the sight of God. I'm thankful for the time I had at Bible school. Uh, where I learned more of God's Word. And I know that's been many of your experience as well. Um, we're going to be taking an offering to support our school and uh, uh, just give us the Lord leads you. Uh, should people make a check payable to our church? Okay. If you're making a check, you can just make it payable to St. Paul's Free Lutheran Church and uh, then we'll make us uh, some payment to the, to the Bible school to make all equal amount. Uh, so I'll give you a chance to write a check over with the offering plates and you guys going to take the... All right, good.
God for that grace, and we want to thank you again for the opportunity for our last song here to, to come tonight. Thanks, Thank you, ladies, who served us that delicious supper. I meant to mention that earlier. Thank you, and I know the students would be happy to visit with any of you, too, afterwards tonight, and before they sing the last song, too, let's just join our hearts in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we praise you for your rich grace in Christ, and the day full of grace that we have had today, and with the joy to live and walk in you each and every day, how you are with us in the various challenges that we face to each day. And we pray you continue to meet the needs in each heart and life. Bless the message of this last song to, to each of our hearts, too. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Thanks for coming.